Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for this video. Uh, today I'm really excited to tell you about a new Computech App Engine feature, our analytical page. The analytical page allows you to create your own custom reports really quickly and easily. There is a huge amount of flexibility in how you can filter and organize the data you include in your reports. And then you can leverage those reports to gain greater visibility into your production activities, identify potential for improvements, fine tune your strategies, plan for the future. This really gives you a huge amount of control over your data and lets you use your data to your benefit. So I think this is a really interesting, really useful new feature for our customers. So we'll start off by logging into Computec App Engine and here, on the Computec App Engine Launchpad, we get some tiles representing the Computec App Engine plugins that we have already installed as usual. The analytical pages are based on the data from Computec App Engine plugins. At the time of making this video, we've already released the analytical page for Manufacturing Order 360, which allows us to create reports based on manufacturing order data. We will be adding analytical pages for more plugins in the future. Uh, the first one will be for uh, the QC automation plugin. And um, so you'll be able to create custom reports about quality control. And actually I'll give you a little preview of that at the end of this video. The way that this works also means that if any of our partners or our customers, if they create their own Computech App Engine plugins, they will also be able to create their own analytical page for that plugin. So along with their custom functionality, they will also have this really easy way to create reports based on it. You can access the analytical pages in a couple of different ways. One way is from the launch pad by clicking on this icon here. This will take us to a list of all the report variants for the plugins. And if you only want to see reports for a certain plugin, you can use this filter up here. And um, that will be really useful in the future as we release more and more analytical pages. Or if you go directly into a particular plugin, then under analytics views, there will be a tile for each variant you've set up. In either case, you will see a screen, something like this, that has tiles which represent what we call variants listed under each plugin. These variants are simply like preset or customized reports. When you install the plugin, you get a standard variant as default. And from there, you can modify that one to create your own variants. You can create as many as you want, and then the user can choose to keep those private for themselves, or they can make them public so that other users can also use those reports. Now, you can see here that we have two variants for Manufacturing Order 360, the default, the standard one that comes with the installation, and another custom variant that I set up earlier. And um, we'll come back to that one in a while, but let's look at the default one for now. So here we are on the analytical page. At the top of the page, you have a list of manufacturing order fields. And at the bottom, we have a list of all the manufacturing order transactions. You can see the yellow arrows here. So as with our Computec App Engine plugins, you can open the relevant SAP Business One documents using them. You can also organize how the data is presented on the table in a number of ways. You can choose what columns are displayed and what order they're displayed. You can group the rows on the table and more. You can do all of this by clicking on the settings button. It will bring up this window and the first tab is for sorting the data. You can sort the data based on multiple columns in the priority that they are listed in here. You can add as many different uh, columns to sort the data by as you want. And um, you just click on this last blank one and then choose the column that you want to add. And then you can uh, choose whether each column is sorted in ascending or descending order. On the next tab, you get to it by clicking on this little eye icon. You can choose which columns are visible on your table. So you can limit what appears on the report to what you really need. Uh, it can be four fields, 14 whatever you want. Then the next tab, it allows you to 
freeze columns just like in Microsoft Excel. So basically you can choose a column or columns and then they will always appear on the left of the table even when you scroll to the right. In the last tab, you can group the documents in the table. Uh, maybe if we want to group them by manufacturing order, I'd choose uh, manufacturing order document number from the list. And then on the table, the transactions will now appear in groups according to the manufacturing order number. So I'll just expand this group for manufacturing order 24 so you can see what's going on there. Um, so we've got all the transactions for this manufacturing order listed together. And you could also create sort of subgroups. So you could group these, first of all, as we have done by manufacturing order. But within that group, the transactions could then be organized into groups of, for example, transaction type or warehouse code. And you can have sort of multiple layers of these groupings. You can use these fields at the top here as filters to define what manufacturing order transactions will be displayed below. We already have one filter set up by document date, but you can filter it by as many different fields as you want. For example, if you click on transaction type, you get a list of transaction types and you just check the box for the ones that you want to include in your report. It's possible to use any manufacturing order field as your filter. As you can see, it's really straightforward to use them you actually can't see all of the options here. And that is because you can also select which filters are displayed. You can in fact choose from a really large number of filters. To add or remove filters, you just have to click on the adapt filters button and you check the appropriate check boxes. So these ones that are checked, they are already visible, um, but you can add any others that you want. Let's just pick a random one and we'll take month. And you can see it now appears and uh, we could now use it to restrict the data that appears on the table. So as I mentioned, you can use any field to filter what data appears in the report. So there's really a huge amount of flexibility in how you can use this. So that's what's going on with the table more or less, but we can also present this data in graph format. To do that, you click on this icon here that looks like a graph. And um, we've got some options here to set up the parameters for our graph. Let's say we want to um, analyze the cost of components, for example. So we choose a dimension. I mean, you could choose like quantity revision. There are many, many options here. But as I said, we'll choose component, for example. And then you have to choose some kind of measurement in the next field. So ours will be cost. And then we have to choose some mathematical function and um, we'll choose some, but you could also have the option to choose like average or minimum or maximum here. At this stage, some data will appear on the chart like we have here. And you can sort this data using like the last field here. So you can change the order in which things are displayed. You can also change the kind of chart the data is presented on here. So we can have like a line graph, there's two different kinds of bar charts and a pie chart. Looking back at the header now, you'll see another icon portraying a chart up there. If you click on that, you will get these kind of micro charts and, and we can actually use those to filter our data. So let's say I want to see a list of transactions for finished manufacturing orders. I will go back to the table view and then on this micro chart that shows order status, I can just click on this block of finished manufacturing orders and the list will appear on the table below like so. You can also select multiple options. So if I want to see started and finished manufacturing orders, I can do that too. Uh, on the third micro chart here, we've got the production balance by date. So um, we just can click on a particular date to see all the transactions for that date. You can also display that data on in graph format as well if you want. Oh, and one more thing. And um, there's also a kind of hybrid view option where you can see the uh, data in the graph and also on a table at the same time. So once you've defined what data you want to appear in the report and how it should be organized and presented, you can save this setup as a new variant. You just click on this little arrow and you choose save as. So you give a name 
And at this stage, you can decide if you want to make this one your default variant. And also, if you want this variant to be public, meaning that this variant will also be available to other users. So if we just pop on over to another variant that I've already set up, I'll go back to the list of variants and we'll take a look at this manufacturing order transactions and WIP variants report. You can see that it's noted here that this one is a private one. It means it's just for me. So um, you can see that there's a lot of different filters here. We can use those filters to make specific queries now within the parameters of this variant. Like if you want to see data about a specific time frame or a specific component or anything else really. And um, these filters take up a lot of space so I can hide them just uh, by clicking here on that little arrow if I don't want to use them for now. And um, we can look at this chart that I set up earlier too, which shows variants. We can also download the data in the table here as an Excel file by clicking on this button. You've got a choice of two different file types. Since we're here, I'll give you just a quick sneak peek at the analytics page for quality control. As I said, that isn't quite ready yet, but you can see what we're testing at the moment. So those microcharts at the top, they're going to be really useful here to get reports about quality control tests. So I think we've covered all the main features, but the scope for usage for these features is just absolutely enormous. There are so many different scenarios in which this would be useful to businesses who want to get more from their data. If you'd like to know more, please do get in touch with us and we will be very happy to discuss it with you.